Good evening, listeners. A warm welcome to Views on Health. A great pleasure to have with me on the program tonight, Dr. Isarujit Lienage, who's a consultant, a gastroenterologist, and hepatologist at the Faculty of Medical Sciences, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura in Kote. A warm welcome, Doctor, to our program and your first time in the yes, series. I'm happy to be here. Great pleasure. So, for the information of our listeners, considering uh, Dr. Isurujit Lienage's specialty, the topic under discussion is fatty liver. Over to you, Doctor. Right. So, um, fatty liver is a very, uh, very timely topic, and it's it's uh, kind of, it's it's kind of rising in in in, in prevalence and incidence in. Um, Sri Lanka as well as across the world and there's uh, a lot of evidence research that that says that uh, almost one in three Sri Lankans as well as uh, people across the world uh, suffer from this um, but then it's a very kind of it has become a household name because a lot of people have fatty liver um, so fatty liver is a diagnosis well hardcore fatty liver is a diagnosis of histology so that means we need to take a part of the liver out look it under the microscope to definitely say that it is fatty liver so as kind of the word uh, implies it means there is a, a excess of fat uh, being deposited in the liver and that fat causes some liver injury so that's what um, it means it's a very simple meaning um, but when it comes to the general public um, fatty liver is a diagnosis of uh, an uh, an ultrasound scan. So a lot of people have had an ultrasound scan that says stage one, stage two fatty liver, and they they think they have fatty liver. So it's that appearance is not not directly um, that does not imply that you have fatty liver. Uh, it's 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 a suggestion that that you might be having fatty liver. Um, and and then when it comes to fatty liver, if you look at the causes, so why why you get fatty liver? Uh, I told you that it's because of uh, increased fat being deposited in the liver. So when that fat can come in two ways, uh, one is uh, when you drink too much of alcohol. So what we have in that context is alcoholic fatty liver. So that's how they have, they get liver injury and then ultimately that ends up in uh, long-term complications such as cirrhosis. But the common thing is not that, that is when we have too much of fatty, fat in our body. So what, what happens is when, 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 the energy that we take in is in excess of what is required for our body. Um, the body stores that excess energy in fat um, as fat. So, um, what we tell um, tell our patients is that fat can come in in any possible way. So it's not essentially that you ingest a lot of fat, but you you it, you can be taking starch, you can be st uh, taking meat, fish, even vegetables and fruits. So whatever the, the mode of modality of uh, food that you eat, it's just that you have excess energy uh, in your body and that energy is stored as fat. And when that fat is in excess, it, it's stored as uh, uh, fat in the liver and elsewhere. And that excess fat causes uh, liver injury. Uh, doctor, thank you for that um, introduction to the topic of fatty liver. You said you take a piece of the liver. How does that happen? Well, that's um, that comes quite late, late in the late in the process of we looking after the patient. So it's not something that we do initially. So it's because it's so common. Now we what we do is we look at the entire context uh, and look at the other things that the patient has. Uh, and 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 assume that the patient is having fatty liver and and treat them uh, as it is so we do a liver biopsy as a kind of a late measure when either the patient is not responding and mainly not to look for fatty liver but because as i mentioned earlier that appearance in the scan and the changes in the liver tests can be due to a lot of reasons so we want to make sure that it's not something else so that is the the place where the liver biopsy comes in so it's not really to diagnose fatty liver. Fatty liver is mainly diagnosed in the clinical context. Uh, what sort of uh, common signs and symptoms would manifest? Like what would a patient come and tell you or feel and then come to you and say, Doctor, I'm having this and obviously you will do your investigations. But uh, like initially, what would they feel and would that go on for some time before they sit up and take notice? I mean, we sometimes tend to overlook certain mm -hmm. uh, 
pains, this, that, or the other, you know, discomforts and swellings and think it'll pass off. And sometimes, some things, sometimes they do when they come back. So is that the case where this is concerned, some of the signs and symptoms? And then for how long does that go before you actually, they actually sit up and take notice? Right. So that is the question of the century when it comes to fatty liver. And that is the dilemma we all face. Um, when it comes to fatty liver, and for that matter, a lot of other conditions that affect the liver, people are absolutely asymptomatic or they don't feel anything until it's quite too late. Um, so um, I, I guess there's no answer to your question as to how to detect it, but it's, um, well, something that I forgot to mention that I was giving the introduction, fatty liver is also uh, called the liver manifestation of what we now talk a lot about, the lifestyle-related diseases, that is diabetes, being overweight, high blood pressure, having high cholesterol. So they now, we believe that it's all due to that energy imbalance that I just spoke about. So that when you have one risk factor, let's say you have high, high, high uh, cholesterol or diabetes, or if you think you're overweight, so you have a high risk of having fatty liver. I'm not essentially necessarily saying that if you don't have any of them you don't have fatty liver but vice versa is 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 uh, correct um, in a lot of times so if you have a high risk and you've had a scan and and someone told you that you have a liver uh, fatty liver or if you have had a liver because we do liver tests for a lot of lot of reasons now and it's a very commonly uh, performed uh, investigation so if if one of those shows even a slight derangement, you need to uh, act upon it. So that's that's the only message that I can give. And it's very likely that you would not feel anything. But approximately about 10% of uh, people with fatty liver can have some degree of discomfort in the right side, right upper part of their abdomen. And um, real, if it is what we call, if it has gone to a kind of a uh, next level where they have what we call... Uh, uh, fatty liver associated hepatitis then they can kind of they can feel uh, lethargic they can feel as if they're running a mild fever they might not feel fit but they are all things that we cannot really rely on uh, doctor when you say um, that it's common yes because uh, i think lifestyle plays a huge role in mm. this uh, problem i mean i'm talking from a lay perspective uh, would you, what sort of age do you see this, like the youngest or among roughly uh, age group that you see patients coming with this problem? Because basically in the past, uh, alcohol related problems are with the more elderly. Yes. But now we find younger people coming up with various ailments. Where this is concerned, what is the age group that you have seen that is cause for alarm? Right. So. F now, uh, for, before that, I think we should consider what happens when you have fatty liver. So fatty liver is, a, is as I told, it can cause some, some degree of liver damage. But our liver has a kind of an incredible capacity to kind of supply um, or rather look after three of us. So it has three times the capacity uh, of what is required, so the, which is again the reason why when, even when the liver damage goes on, you wouldn't feel anything until about 60% of the liver is damaged. Um, so when fatty liver progresses, it takes years for you to uh, develop that degree of severe liver impairment. So it, we're looking at a time frame of 5 to 15 years in total. So fatty liver, now we have to talk about the age where you get the complications and also the age where you start having issues. So we have seen pe uh, people as young as 7, 8 years having fatty liver. And also people in their 40s having being diagnosed with fatty liver for the first time. Now, the issue when you have it at the young age is that that 15 years is when you're 20 or 30 years. So by that time, you can if you develop complications like cirrhosis, that's that's really devastating. So that is that is why we need to kind of look at all the uh, the lifestyle aspect of it and 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 look after ourselves to make sure that you don't get any. So fatty liver does not stand alone. That is the main thing that we need to emphasize to our listener, because it it's 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 a, it's a kind of a it's a, it's a like a it's it's a um, uh, it's a combination or it's a it's a, it's a collection of all the things that we discussed the lifestyle related diseases that we're talking a lot when when it comes to COVID, 
because that people who have all those risk factors would have a higher chance of dying when they have covid so fatty liver is one of those diseases now so it's it's it comes as a cluster um so the onset can be um can vary significantly but i have seen patients in sri lanka who have uh, who who has got cirrhosis by the age of 35 and 40 so that is due to high intake of alcohol but also not because people do say you know he or he never drank but he still has cirrhosis yes so that's an again a very good question so as i told you when you take alcohol and when you uh, when you have too much of fat that is inherently fat you get the same type of liver injury it's it's similar to an extent where even if you look at look at the liver under the microscope the the, the examiner will not know whether it's due to alcohol or having uh, too much of fat in the system so what happens is if you if you can so you can get cirrhosis even without even drinking a drop of alcohol just due to the the condition that we call non alcoholic fatty liver disease and also if you take alcohol you can have alcoholic liver disease but if you do both that comes to a situation where 1 plus 1 becomes not 2 not 3 something like 5 so you end up getting um, these issues a lot sooner now the, the the word for that is dual etiology uh, fatty liver disease so it's kind of a fairly new concept but it's called duffeld we we have heard of the word nuffeld quite a lot it, it stands for non alcoholic fatty liver disease so this dual concept comes when you take uh, both so that is where we have we have heard quite a lot uh, among people saying okay my neighbor had been uh, taking a lot of alcohol he had been drinking one bottle per day for 30 years but he's absolutely fine but there's another person who drank for 3 years and ended up getting cirrhosis so the reason for that is is that there are other factors that that goes on in the background that that predispose you to injury uh, a liver injury uh, due to various uh, factors so what happens doctor now you i diagnose somebody with fatty liver and uh, what happens from that point on was because you did say that it sometimes rather late in the day that you diagnose too yes um so when you diagnose it it well diagnosis has a few aspects when it comes to fatty liver we first see whether they have fatty liver Uh, and and the etiology whether there's an alcohol part to it or whether it's purely non alcoholic fatty liver disease and then we look to see if there is ongoing liver injury at that moment so we call it disease activity so whether they are the with the liver is currently being battered and then we see how crippled the liver is that is how how much the liver has been damaged already so depending on those three elements we decide on the management but the the most important thing uh, for management across the world right now is lifestyle modification and weight reduction um so um the research is that when you when you do a, have about you when you achieve about 5% weight loss uh, your liver injury kind of halts and when you reach 10% weight loss a certain degree of permanent damage even can be reversed so we are looking at so the ultimate ultimate thing that 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 anyone with fatty liver needs to achieve which is the tough bit tough tough uh, goal is to lose uh, a certain amount of weight but there are now newer medications and also other tests uh, that needs to be done uh, along with that diagnosis so in addition to that medical part it's mainly the mainly weight loss and uh, being careful with their diet and also exercise exercise plays a significant role Uh, not because it helps to lose weight now we know i'm i'm sure that we our, our listeners are aware that exercise does not help weight lo- uh, uh, you to lose weight it actually encourages you to stick to that diet which helps you to lose weight but in this context exercise now uh, when i told you that there is a balance of uh, fatty tissue and not so fatty tissue in the body and then when this balance shifts towards fat you get fatty liver so when you do exercise your muscle mass builds up and your fatty tissue becomes used up so that 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 in that way it helps fatty liver so we are looking at three things that is exercise uh, being careful with your diet and finally to lose weight so that is the ultimate thing you need to do if you have fatty liver but then the alcohol part so alcohol if you have active fatty liver if there's a, a certain amount of liver that has already been damaged uh, we usually advise our patients not to take alcohol at all and and now no doctor can say even that concept of safe alcohol intake is no more 
So you cannot recommend even a little bit of alcohol to anyone, even if it's a healthy person. So I think that for that, um, that's that's the answer to that question. So, in fact, you answer the question I was going to ask you whether there can be a limit to alcohol and uh, the intake, and uh, how much would would be recommended by me. I'm not saying you're saying go and drink, but sometimes they say okay, a drink or something is okay is what certain doctors have said in the past. But I guess now the trend has changed. It's actually it's it's a very kind of a very complex Trick, tricky, and a tricky, tricky political Quite question. Yes. But the latest uh, st- there's there is a, la- uh, a very important uh, statement by the World Health Organization, which uh, which specifically says that you cannot so that 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 concept of safe amount of alcohol uh, that concepts no more. Again, the re- one reason is this. Now, if you have fatty liver then even what is considered within that safe limit can cause significant liver injury. So so you cannot really recommend, you cannot tell anyone that there is a safe limit of alcohol anymore. Because anyway, it's considered uh, something negative to your health. Yes, yes. There had been some research uh, um, uh, that is in contrary, but but again, as I said, it's a very tricky question. I don't think we, I, I, I cannot go there because it's, it's, it's a discussion on itself. But from... The point that I want to make from the uh, uh, in the background of fatty liver, any amount of alcohol can be harmful. So it's that's that's where you have to be careful. So once this condition sets in in the system, uh, can it lead to other complications? Right. So fatty liver um, complications are of uh, two folds. One is liver related complications. So now when fatty liver goes on for some time, as I told you, it can it can give rise to cirrhosis. So what happens is when liver cells continuously die and those dying cells are replaced by what we call fibrous tissue. So that is what you get in a scar. So your liver actually becomes scarred. And, and because the liver cannot replace the cells at the rate that it's being uh, damaged. And then when that goes on for some time, you can end up getting the condition called cirrhosis. Um, that's, that is the main complication when it comes to liver, but it is also associated with cancer in the liver. But fatty liver also waves us a red flag that tells you that there is internal fat, that there is fat in your internal organs. So that is the other... Com- so if you look at 100 people who have fatty liver, roughly about 20% of them, 20 of them would have a complication related to uh, cirrhosis, Whereas the rest of 80 people will die of a cardiovascular di- uh, uh, condition. That is heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke. So the fatty, having found fatty liver tells you that you have a high risk of getting all the other uh, uh, conditions that we uh, just uh, mentioned. So that is the other complication, which again uh, uh, tells you that you have to be careful. And again, what you need to do are the three things that I mentioned earlier, uh, diet, exercise and weight loss. But what is your treatment? Um, so my my treatment is giving them this talk and, and, and encouraging them to stick to that. Uh, uh, um, um, we, kind of, we, we, kind of, we, we formulate a plan and we have a weight loss target and we have an uh, exercise target and we monitor the patient based on that and then see if the, uh, the liver, func- liver tests get better. But there are some drugs that we start on certain people, uh, certain individuals, uh, and there are some uh, vitamins that help with healing of the liver. So we do all of that. Now, there is a newer drug that is recently approved, probably in the last couple of years, that help with fatty liver. So we, we start that on people whom it's needed, and then it's, it's mainly a longer process of monitoring them to see if they get better. If they don't get better, as I mentioned at the beginning, they need more tests, which might even end up them getting a liver biopsy. Um, And then um, if they have significant liver injury, if they have scarring, then we have to look for a whole array of complications and then other things that we need to do to look after their liver to make sure they don't get any of the other complications. So there can't be a reversal as such? So as I mentioned earlier, there is a point of no return, but until you reach that level, even after you reach that level, there is some return. Mm. So what, what actually happens is when it comes to the liver, liver functions, as I told you, now until you reach that two-third mark, you will not have any problem. But on top of that, you can have things like cans on the liver, but until you reach that, that threshold, that, is, that threshold is the point of no return. But 
even if you pass that and then if you stop if you do those things mainly if you can lose about 10 percent of your weight your liver can recover a little bit but it will not be as good as uh, where it where it started but there is some degree of reversal but not 100 percent but un, up, up to about 40 percent there is a there is there is room to uh, uh, bring it back uh, and make it better Doctor, is a person with fatty liver or patients with presenting with this condition necessarily obese? I mean, or on on the heavier side? Not essentially. That's again a very good question. So there are there are two types of fatty liver. Uh, one is fatty liver that is associated with all that uh, complication that I just discussed. There is another element called lean fatty liver, lean naffled, where you have. Uh, um, fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver in a, in a person uh, who is not so obese. And management in, uh, or rather getting them to get better is actually more difficult than a person who's obese because, as I told you, the most important thing is losing weight. So weight, losing 10% of your weight when you're 100 kilos is a lot, lot easier than losing 10% of your weight when you're 50. So patients who are not obese, um, managing non-alcoholic fatty liver is difficult but the most important thing is if you are told that you have fatty liver or if there is a change in your liver tests and you are not very obese you have to be specifically very careful and you need to see a doctor because it could not it could be a lot of other things that is not fatty liver giving rise to that appearance in the scan and the change in a blood test so they need more meticulous investigations and and to make sure that it is fatty liver and not anything else you know, this is basically an ailment that is um, that is connected to men. How do I, you get? Uh, I strongly men? disagree. So that was the thought. That was what was thought, even for diabetes, high blood pressure. But evidence in Sri Lanka is absolutely in contrary. So in Sri Lanka, more uh, ladies have diabetes, more ladies have high blood pressure, more ladies are overweight, more ladies have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and there's no 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 uh, research to. Uh, tell this but in my experience from uh, patients that I see more ladies have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease more al ladies have uh, complications of that also. So that of course that means associated with the the fat in the body. Exactly. No, not the alcohol fat. Not the alcohol fat. So I want to make make it very clear that what when we talk the, the fatty liver that we discussed today is predominantly non-alcoholic fatty liver disease but what ultimately happens is the same but when I talked about uh, weight loss and all those things, they are mainly for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. There's only one thing to do if it's alcoholic fatty liver disease, that is to stop drinking. Thank you, Doctor. It's been very interesting because you had sort of really spelt it out, so to speak, for the benefit of our listeners. And time is catching up with us. So let's ask you one more question before we wind up. So if in Sri Lanka, taking our situation, you have, uh, of course, the alcohol-based uh, condition where it's uh, the men are more prone to it and then uh, of course then, then the men also have the uh, the uh, fatty liver because of the fat in the body which also extends to women yes so um, in, in in the midst of all of this um, do any children come into this condition I mean in the sense that uh, for any reason obese children can they also have a problem that can lead to it later not not later. So I, we we see children with fatty liver disease, significant fatty. You said that. Yes. So, so what, how does that um, fit into this? So it it fits in. Uh, uh, so that the the start is uh, during childhood, and as I mentioned earlier, when it goes on for ten fifteen years, it can lead to all the complications that we discussed about, and even for children, what I spelled out earlier is correct, kind of is valid. Uh, that is roughly about. One in five of them can have liver-related complication, but the main, most important thing is that they can have all the other uh, lifestyle-related complications. So if the ultimate message that we want to give to our listener is that, that we need an entire attitudinal change in our, in our society in the way we look at our food. So that's what I tell all my patients. Now we look at food as if something we should internalize, but we, we need to look at our food as if something that we are buying. We need to pay and buy, and what we pay with is calories, our calories that we take in. So 
if you take there are some food that are high calorie uh, uh, containing food such as deep fried food and then there is um, all the uh, sweetened uh, drinks and pastries and 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 food from bakeries cakes the ice cream curd they will have a high um, high energy content or in energy density you need to look at them like expensive things that you want to buy and you have to see if the number uh, the amount of calories that you ingest and the risk that you are taking is worth the taste and the the enjoyment that you get from that food so in other words we we tend to internalize things that are unwanted just because they are available and just because they are lying there because it's food so that is the attitude in you know, a change that we need to see if it's worthwhile and if it is worth you can take it and then if you buy something expensive from your salary you spend the rest of your salary very carefully so similarly you you have something that is that that has a lot of energy you need to make sure that you balance out the rest of the day and eat less for the from the next meal so that you make sure that your energy balance is 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 um, is maintained so that is that is how we achieve that uh, uh, status thought provoking indeed doctor i really like that uh, closing uh, uh, remarks that you made and on that note we end our discussion on fatty liver so we place on record our grateful thanks to dr isarujit lienage consultant gastroenterologist and hepatologist faculty of medical sciences university of sri jawardhanapura in kote for sparing a very valuable time to be with us on the program thank you very much it's, and it's sharing a, it's your expert a, knowledge it's a pleasure doctor it's a been pleasure to be here as well thank you and uh, we look forward to having you on the program again Yeah, I look forward to that. Thank you so much. My thanks also go to Manjula Senviratna for technical assistance. I'm Fatima Razik Kardasen. Good night. And hoping to catch you next Monday, same time on Views on Health. <laughs>